Right. Now we got to think about the two that are more tricky, which are Ampere Maxwell and Faraday's law. And let me erase some of this. And we're going to look at Faraday's law first. So let me just write it over here. Again, E dot delta L is equal to negative DDT of the magnetic flux through an area. Yeah, so this is Faraday. And I'm going to write, write Ampere Maxwell up here too. And since, an it, and since we already know that the current is zero everywhere, I'm going to just write this as B dot DL equal to zero, no current, plus mu naught epsilon zero, time derivative of E dot n hat dA. Okay? So let's look at Faraday's law first. And what we're going to do is we're going to think about a loop, okay? Because we have to think about the electric field around the loop. And the loop we're going to pick is a loop that extends partly into this slab of moving electric and magnetic fields and extends, extends partly out of it. So here is the, the imaginary loop we're going to pick. It sort of juts into the, uh, into the loop. And so we have a region here where there is a magnetic flux, at least in part, of that rectangular loop. Okay? So let's look at these in, this in turn. So here's our, here's our slab of field. Here's the magnetic field pointing out towards us. Here's the electric field pointing up. And the whole thing is moving again to the right with speed V. We're going to call the part of the, the so the loop has a, uh, a width W and a height H. And the distance, the amount that's inside the non-zero field region is X. Okay. At this instant, what's the magnetic flux through the, through the loop, through the bounded surface? Magnetic field is B. And that's just a uniform magnetic field pointing out. And we're just looking for the magnetic flux through that region. X is this distance. So imagine you just draw a rectangle. And part of that rectangle is sticking inside the region of non-zero field. Okay, there's a how much of it X is sticking inside. Okay, and the, but the whole total distance from here to here is W. Okay. Okay, so we have 62% of us saying answer 4B times X times H, right? Because the magnetic field is non-zero only in here. Outside, we said B is equal to zero. So when you're looking at the flux through this entire area, the only non-zero contribution you get to the flux is through this, this region, right? So that's x. That area is going to be x times h. Magnetic field is perpendicular to that area. The flux is b times x times h, okay? So that's b, x, h. But for Faraday's law, we don't just care about the flux. We care about whether the flux is changing. So let's imagine that as this region of field moves, it moves a little bit, okay? So it starts here, and then it moves some distance delta x, and it's moving at a speed v, so that additional distance it moves is v times delta t. So in a time delta t, what's the change in magnetic flux? How much does the magnetic flux increase over that period of time delta t? Okay, uh, big vote for number three, which is B, V, delta T, H. Sizable vote for number five. Five isn't the change. What is five? Five is the total right now, okay? So our, init our initial was B, X, H. Uh, delta phi is going to be that amount of increase, which is going to be B times delta X times H, or B... V delta T times H. And so phi final, we could say, is uh, number five. B 
times x plus delta x or x plus v delta t, that total length now times the height h. Okay, so we're just we're just looking for the change b v delta t times h. Everybody okay with the difference there? Questions? Okay. So Faraday's law, one way we could write it is that this side is the EMF, right? And this side is negative d magnetic flux dt. So if we want to find delta flux over delta t, what's that going to be? We're just worried about the magnitude for right now. We'll worry about the direction later. Okay, just divide that result by delta t, and you end up with b times v times h. Okay, so we end up with one half of this equation. So again, EMF equal to magnitude of EMF, just say, equal to delta flux over delta t, and this side is giving us b times v times h. All right. Well, let's look at the other side of the equation. The other side of the equation involves not flux, but this round trip uh, path integral of the electric field. Okay, and we've, we've done these before. You have a path, okay, a rectangle here. Inside this region, you have a uniform electric field pointing upward, but outside you have an electric field equal to zero. So think about Picking a, a direction, remember around a path you have to go clockwise or counterclockwise. You can just choose uh, just choose, choose clockwise if you like, if that makes life easier for you. And think about what the value of E dot delta L summed up over each piece of this path is going to give you round trip. Okay, and these path integrals always seem to drive us nuts, so let's, let's talk about these once again. This is the same thing as that one problem we did with Ampere's Law. Okay, remember you had to break it up into pieces, think about the direction of delta L along each piece, and look at the dot product of the, elect the field and your delta L path vector. So let's look at each piece in turn. Okay, first of all, which way do you want to go? Clockwise, counterclockwise? You pick. Counterclockwise, fine. Okay, so we start here, let's say. We're going to go counterclockwise, so we have a delta L along this piece, but what's electric field out here? Zero. Okay, so that gives us E dot DL is equal to zero. I go from here to here, but along that region, the electric field is zero. Okay, so again, the dot product gives me zero. I'm now inside the region. I'm going a distance of, well, be X plus delta X would be the total length, and the electric field is pointing in what direction? up. So what's that dot product going to give me along that part of the path? Zero. Okay, they're perpendicular to each other. I go downward and that is a distance h. The electric field is pointing upward. That dot product is going to give me what? It's actually going to be what sign? Negative. Okay, so, so ignoring the sign, the magnitude is going to be what? EH, okay, the electric field, it's going to be the magnitude of the field times the magnitude of the path length times the cosine of 180, okay, or we're negative 1, and then take the magnitude, it's just E times H. So, so far we've got EH contributed from this part. That part's going to give us what? Zero, again, the electric field is perpendicular to the path length, and again, if we're outside, the electric field is equal to zero. So we get zero. So the only part of this path that contributes anything to the path integral is this segment right here, and we get E times H. So we have E times H as our result on this side of the equation, and that tells us, just last question, well, I don't think we even have to poll. Shout it out. What's, what's the relationship between E and B here? Equals... BV, okay, so the H cancels out, length cancels out, and we find a result here that says that if this is true, if this is a possible pattern of electric and magnetic field, then we've got to satisfy this relationship. The magnitude of the electric field has got to be equal to the magnitude of the magnetic field times the speed at which it's traveling, okay? 
So let's hang on to that and do the very last equation here, which is this new thing, this Ampere-Maxwell law.